As of now, I have approximately 85 hours of love-hate relationship with the game called Pal World. I really tried to love this game. There are a ton of things it does incredibly well, but unfortunately even more things that are done oh, far from well. Some evenings I would stay up until 3 am catching pals, upgrading the base, collecting materials, exploring the map and struggling with bosses. While some other ones I would have absolutely no passion about the game and literally force myself to play because it felt so shallow and empty. Maybe this comes from unrealistic expectations that people, including myself, have about the game witnessing its immediate success and assuming the game is perfect. After all, developers themselves are super chill about the current drop in players, as the game content obviously has its limits. So it's quite normal to finish what the game has to offer and move on to other games until PAL World has some new content updates. The problem is, I haven't even finished what PAL World currently has to offer. I'm level 50, whole map is explored and I have 3 out of 5 dour bosses killed, having no motivation to finish the remaining two because I know there is nothing else coming next. Killing all five tower bosses should eventually open access to the earth tree which is inaccessible now, so at this point late game content is limited to catching pulse or breeding giga chat pulse. That's it. <laughs> wow! You might be wondering why the f*** would I complain about catching pulse in a game that is about catching pulse. Well, being the key mechanic and the main focus that should keep the player busy and entertained, catching pals in PAL world is extremely boring. I have to admit that it is indeed fun for the first 20-30 levels while you still learn the game and level up to catch those deadly ass pals which seemed so out of reach back when you started. But after eventually catching a few of those it never feels special again, even going to much higher level areas with completely different pals you never have seen before. And keep in mind that catching 10 of each pal is a fundamental way of leveling up, so it's inevitable that sooner or later you start perceiving it not as a fun experience you want to do, but rather as a job you have to do. Now you can feel like those poor pals you enslaved on your base and made them do something they don't feel like doing. To continue on pal taming aspect of the game, I feel like it's a good place to also mention breeding. Nice. This activity felt super exciting to me at first. My first experiment was to craft good working Anubises and try to get perfect passives on them. I figured out which combinations of parents produce an Anubis, then farmed the parents until I got some passives I want, optimized my cake production and spent time creating like 50 of those Anubises to actually have a bunch with the correct combination of passives I needed. And it was fun all along. But it wasn't fun ever since. I had ambitious goals to also create good fighting pals or ignition Jormontides for even better caking or ingoting, but I just didn't have any desire to invest time into it anymore. If I would be a PAL world content creator or a full-time streamer, I can see myself producing such type of content, but for a casual gaming there is really no reason at all to engage seriously into this, which is a pity. My journey with the game wasn't a straight line from pure love to pure hate, rather it was fluctuating back and forth as I was discovering other things that seemed entertaining. One of such love reviving moments was the creation of second base. While my first base was in default spawn location, it was probably similar to the first base of each PAL world player. Quite far from impressive. So when I got a chance to build a second one, I felt like I wanna try my engineering skills and build something cool. Now, creativity isn't my strongest side, okay? So I was really drawing a lot of inspiration from some popular PAL world streamers. However, I only borrowed the overall construction layout tips. While still arranging the place by myself, I cannot explain how much fun it turned out to be. To be honest, it was probably the best experience I've had with the game. There was a lot of trial and error until you figure out where to place specific crafting or utility structures, beds so pals actually go sleep on them, play with different pal combinations to maximize efficiency, fix things that make your pals get stuck, etc. Regarding the last point, nowhere in this review I felt like bringing up bugs and pal glitches on a base as a negative side. It is an early access game after all. But now I even realize they feel like a positive thing to me. Game feels so casual and easy in many places that finally figuring out how to prevent your pals from getting stuck actually feels like an additional challenge in understanding the game. 
But now back to the construction point. Not to go very deep into basic resource and building fundamentals, I would just say that this aspect of the game feels to me quite organic and fun. The building complexity and the amount of required resources scales very well into the very end of the game. Farming resources yourself initially is quite fun. And by the moment it becomes not fun, you optimize it by building stone pit and wooden farm and automating the process with the help of pulse. But the most giga chad resource and the crucial part that makes base building and crafting fun is ore. I absolutely love how they made ore in this game. It is needed for practically everything from the late early game until the very end game. And you need a lot of it. Is it scarce? Well, not really. Or deposits are quite widespread in PAL world. But essentially, yeah, it is scarce, as you will have to constantly mine those to craft whatever you need on the base. And it takes time. And it weighs a lot. So you will have to do multiple rounds. And then your pickaxe breaks. And then you will think how annoying this is. And then at some point you will bring your boar to help. And then you will figure out you could build a base there so you don't have to go back and forth every time. And then you will finally expect to have your supply needs satisfied. And then you will still have barely enough ingots to craft whatever you need. This aspect of the game feels really challenging. And I have to say that I like it a lot. It prevents you from feeling too comfortable from having those millions of stone from stone pit and thinking you can afford anything. You never have a surplus of ore. Ore is always in circulation, being used for pulse spheres, bullets, nails, structures and you always need to prioritize how to distribute it properly to satisfy all of your needs. God bless the ore for making this game more challenging, or I would probably quit much earlier. Regarding the construction variety, I think it's great. Most of the constructions are a essential so you end up really making good use of them, with the only exception being probably the medicine workbench. Usually you are better off to just buy medicine from the merchant. And same goes for cooking stove. I didn't really feel any incentive to cook anything except for the cake as it is needed for the breeding farm. Yeah, some dishes do provide useful buffs to you or your pals like increasing your damage by 10%, but this is only useful in late game and even then it is probably just for min maxers and is not required for comfortable games. Play. Most of the times you are well off just eating berries or raw meat that just occupies your inventory. It's fucking what I would like to see in PAL world is simply more incentives to utilize cooking and medicine. Some basic ideas straight out of my head. For medicine, healing pots. The game doesn't offer any straightforward healing mechanics, so you should only rely on passive regeneration, use special skills of some pals or go to sleep. And in high level encounters you often have situations where you would make a good use of a healing potion. I see absolutely no harm to the gameplay by introducing this. For cooking, for example, they could make diminishing effect if consuming the same type of food all over again. So for instance, to become full first time you need 10 berries, next Next time it's 20, 30, etc. And you already would feel some urge to switch to something different. Regarding technology point upgrade system, overall I think it's done pretty well. The rewards it provides are on point and the way it evolves from basic rewards which require just stone and wood to much more sophisticated versions is very organic. However, one thing about technology points that is annoying is how they pile up and you always have like 20 plus of those, even playing the game with x1 experience multiplier. A little more scarcity would definitely make it more demanding, requiring you to prioritize where to spend the points. Ancient technology points on the other hand are much more limited. But the upgrade tree overall is an absolute joke. Grappling gun, feedback and sphere launcher, seriously, two out of three of these are absolutely useless with grappling gun being an imba, no comments here. Ancient technology upgrades sound like something special. It definitely has much greater potential than what it ended up offering. I almost feel like making every weapon in the game require ancient technology point instead of the ordinary one would be a great idea. For instance, unlocking musket it was a very special moment in my playthrough, with scrapping all of their materials required for crafting the gun itself and the bullets, time to craft and the satisfaction it brings while using. Thinking I would have to unlock it with ancient technology point would only make this journey better knowing I spent my scarce point on something that actually brings value. I would consider crafting and building in PAL world to be assigned to survival aspect of the game, with the other parts of it being the actual survival components – food, temperature and possibly hostile environment. I'm saying possibly because the only example of that is just occasional raids on your base, which only happen when you yourself are at the base, and aren't actually very dangerous. Regarding the food, I mentioned this previously, that there are no incentives to eat something besides just berries, and it is mostly just annoying. 
Similar thing is with temperature. It was interesting exactly one first night when you haven't built the base yet and have no clothes and you actually feel threatened by the HP bar ticking down because you're freezing and don't know what to do. But afterwards it's just an annoying aspect of the game that could be removed altogether with no harm to the game whatsoever. Exploration Sounds much more exciting than it actually is in PAL World. PAL World map is massive, but there is nothing to do there. It feels empty. Points of interest include only leaf monks and chests that contain some gold, low-level pulse spheres and useless schematics that you never end up crafting. And I would rather call them points of disinterest or even points of annoyance, because noticing them somewhere far on the horizon urges you to come pick them up, even knowing in advance that it is not worth it at all. There are also bandit camps you can raid to free a random pal from the cage, or identical camps of free pal alliance guys who also have a pal in the cage, what, how does it even, um... <clears throat> anyway, exploration here is very identical to PAL capturing. It is indeed fun for the first 20-30 hours of the game, but becomes boring afterwards as the game has nothing unique to offer. It also just turns into something you have to do, rather than something you want to do, just to unveil the map and unlock waypoints. Each new area basically has the same purpose and content as the previous one, just scaled up level-wise. The last aspect of the game I have to cover is action. And in my opinion, what action contains in itself is mostly the combat side. And combat in PAL world is... Alright? It's not perfect, there are things that annoy me still like level-based damage scaling, but overall, I have to admit that combat is interesting and engaging. Talking about PAL battles separately, the system of different elements and how they are strong or weak against each other is pretty interesting to play with, especially considering the opportunity to customize the skills of your PALs. On top of that, your character also participates in battles directly, utilizing a wide range of weapons. Shooting feels very good in PAL world, starting with an ordinary bow and ending with an assault rifle, each weapon brings a good wipe, with my favorite experience being with the musket. Dodging projectiles from enemies is very satisfying and even lets you feel like playing some sort of Souls-like game. Challenging encounters also require you to toggle your pals so they would avoid enemy attacks as well, which keeps you always focused on the battle. Overall, not having an extraordinary expectations in terms of combat, I think they handled it quite decently. As for the places where the combat happens, except for open world encounters, there are tower bosses and dungeons. And while tower bosses being unique encounters feel challenging and fresh, dungeons are done pretty poorly in the game, as per my personal experience. The only time I enjoyed the dungeon was just the first time, and even then mostly due to the fact that there was a big palladium deposit that I have never seen before. Discovering dungeons on the map feels really special, because they are not marked and usually seem hard to notice, so I ended up marking all of the dungeons I spotted, only to never come back to any single one of them. I would conclude that the dungeons seem as a fake misleading attempt by the game to introduce something diverse from the major gameplay PAL World offers. PAL World is described as action-adventure, survival and monster-taming game. Having covered each of the three aspects in this video, in my opinion, the game doesn't really excel in any of them. Action-adventure part includes combat and exploration, and while combat is somewhat satisfying, the exploration side is very weak because the world is empty and feels dead. Monster-taming part as a core mechanic of the game is simply too repetitive and quickly becomes boring. Survival part is the one of the three I enjoyed the most but still only because of base building with the other survival elements feeling controversial or even unnecessary. Which is a pity, since overall the game undoubtedly has very big potential to be good. The developers of the game seem to be very attentive to community feedback and have ambitious plans for the future updates. I will definitely get back to PAL World to check out how they do raiding and the PvP system, as I strongly believe this could diversify gameplay and make it feel less shallow. But the core mechanics of the game we analyzed today, I just don't think they can do anything fundamental to fix those. So in essence the game would still feel similar. Maybe there is actually nothing wrong with it. After all, this is just my own perception of the game. I haven't watched any other reviews of PAL World yet to keep my opinion as unbiased as possible. But I would absolutely love to hear what you guys think about the game in the comments below. Feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree with me on any of the points. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.